Welcome back, this is Genuine Polish, and today I'm going to be showing you the pip flower pot exploit. And it is an exploit. I don't I personally don't think it's cheating. I use it in my games because I want to be able to use the I want, I want to be able to get to the end of the game and not be so caught up in like micromanaging my base. So I use it. I personally don't think it's cheating, but you know. You can make your own judgments of whether or not you want to use it. But I'm going to show it regardless. So, to start, it's a very simple concept. <laughs> I would recommend getting a pip in a room by itself, just so it's not going to be distracted. It doesn't have any seats in there. You can control what's in there. And give it the minimum walk space that you need. So, right, we have the critter drop-off, a uh, storage bin to put seeds in there. And then you want to build a flower pot and a wall pot if you want to plant food on wall tiles in a room under sand that's the most important thing it has to be under sand and it's really simple so what you want to do is you're going to make the sand fall down on the flower pots and this pip just got confined that's okay because we're in sandbox mode i can just make it very simple and redo this there we go so I'm gonna move these duplicates so they're not in the way. There we go. So, super simple concept, right? Uh, if you are familiar with the pit planting rules, you just need to make sure that it's not going to violate that. So it'll actually plant in either of these pots. These plants around here might be in the range. I don't think they are, but just to be safe, I'm just gonna deconstruct them. And then you wanna provide it with Let me clear the floor here. Oh, can't do that. Well, I'll have them clean this. Okay, now let's get them back out. And then group fruit, spawner, boom. Make it easier for them. So what you want to do is entomb the, f the flower pot and the wall pot. The reason why you can't do this with a hanging pot, because most food, in fact, all food is at least too high. And the wall pot, or the sorry, the hanging pot is one tile short of the roof. And then even if you deconstruct this, it's gonna be like non-eligible, missing tile. So you can't exactly do it with a hanging pot. And then I'm trying to get him to plant in the flower pot. see doesn't seem interested just yet <laughs> I'm gonna fast forward until he plants it okay so he finally planted this grub fruit what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just destroy him, just so he's out of the way. And then I'll show you. So right now we have spindly grub fruits, and they're planted in entombed flower pots. We have to pit plant them on the natural tile. But if you click on the flower pot, you'll see that it has the spindly grub fruit in the flower pot itself, right? And you're thinking like, wow, that's a pain in the ass to do that every time I want to plant a grub fruit. But you can hit copy settings and go to a different flower pot and plant it and your duplicates, if they have a seed available, which I'll give them one, we'll plant it in the flower pot. And here we go. So it has, it's the flower pot causes plant domestication. So this is a domesticated plant and it'll grow in four cycles, like a domesticated plant, like a domesticated spindly grub fruit does. It'll grow in four cycles. And then the next time you want to Plant one, you don't have to do the sand thing again. You just go here, copy settings, boom, and you have two more. And then you can do that also with the wall pot, which is why we planted it. That's why we set up this room like this, and you can plant it there. So super cool. Uh, the biggest perk is that plants in a flower pot don't require fertilization. So as long as you use um, grub fruit, mealwood, and grub fruit, mealwood, and mushrooms, I think are the only three that don't require fertilization, food plants that don't require fertilization, then uh, 
you can basically have unlimited food. And then the reason why I set up this room like this and leave it like this is because once you have relocated some flower pots and wall planters with your new vegetable, you can use those for your next copy setting. And then you can remove these plants and then do it all over again with a different plant with a different seed. So you're going to do millwood, do it here, have just, you could even just have a room, which is actually what I'd recommend doing just having an area where you just make a lot of plot pots and then you plant the different things while you're, as your pip, as your pit plants it, you just copy one over here, copy one over here, copy one over here, and then you just have a template for when you start growing them. It works with Weezworts too, super cool because then you're not using phosphorite and it's cooling at 100% th throughput, and it's super cool, super efficient, saves you a lot of uh, resources, and then it actually enables you to have free food, which that's why it's considered an exploit. Whether or not you want to use it is up to you. I do because I want to be able to play the end content and not have to worry about food. Because food is something you could manage, but it's just something that like causes a little bit of stretch. Maybe doesn't make the game as fun for you. It doesn't for me. So once I have the available resources, I will always do this. And it's not like it's a free thing because you need pips, you need sand, you need uh, the right conditions, and then you can move them. And that's about it. So I'm going to show you one more time the construction. So I just make a room with the smallest amount of movement radius for the pip. You gotta have a critter drop off, storage bin to move seeds, and then I like to do the flower pot and the wall pot right next to each other. And you can forever plant different seeds on here. And then when you've planted them, I would, I would still recommend leaving this room up just in case you like accidentally destroy a flower pot with your last template of that one. But then once you have things planted in here, you can just move them someplace else and then just copy those settings indefinitely. And there you go. It's an unlimited supply of food. And if you combine that with the morb farm that I showed you in another video, that should, over time, uh, cover your food and oxygen. So the only thing that your duplicates really have to worry about as far as like survival goes is heat. Otherwise, you can just focus on the game and try and get to space. Okay, that's all for now. If I think of other uh, kind of exploits or tricks and tips that I can showcase, I'll make a video about them. But I think these are really the two main ones that I'd recommend using if you really want to just get up there to like the end game content and be able to enjoy going to space without you know worrying about your planets back at home too terribly much. That's all I have for today. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, look at my morb farm and maybe watch my walkthrough on a thousand cycle base. Thanks.